morning, Ticks and Kickers. Thank you for joining DDME's weekly radio show, Disaster 365. Today we continue our Hurricane Preparedness series. As you already know, advanced preparation is the best way to position yourself for this 2020 Atlantic hurricane season. Forecasters have warned that the conditions are favorable for a more active than usual season in the months ahead. But the number of storms predicted does not outweigh the level of preparedness required as it only takes one storm to cause major impacts. Even a weak tropical storm hitting the Turks and Caicos Islands, moving slowly or sitting over us like Dorian in the Bahamas, can trigger flooding through heavy rains and storm surge. That's why residents should prepare each year, no matter how active a hurricane season is predicted to be. With this in mind, while the skies are fairly clear, we should be diving deeper into our household hurricane preparation. Joining me on the show today is Mr. James Parker from JAP Constructions. He's a familiar face to many of us and one of the on-call contractors associated with the Public Works Department. Welcome to the show, Mr. Parker. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today. I know you have a wealth of knowledge and simple practical tips that can strengthen our home preparation for this hurricane season. Absolutely. All structures are not built equally and may have various areas of vulnerabilities or weaknesses. Mr. Parker, you're often given that task to prepare several government structures before a storm approaches to withstand the impact. What are some of the key areas you would recommend for the public to inspect and pay special attention to in order to advance their level of preparedness? Thank you again for having me here. The very first thing you should do is, is to inspect your roof because the roof is very important. The roof is the part that really give you, that shelter you from, your, from the storm. Mm -hmm. um, but the main thing is you start from your foundation up. Yeah. And, and in time of storm, you don't wait for the storm to come. You prepare before. Yeah. You, you call you correct instead of react yes right? be proactive that is part <coughs> of the dme's team this year correct and and people may ask oh, what is correct proactive mean you prepare yourself in advance yeah instead of waiting until something happened yeah right so you want to make sure that your doors are mm -hmm. secure properly mm -hmm. your windows are can be able to lock and open properly and your roof is properly properly strapped down oh. um so you need somebody to go up there like let's say for an old person older person if you know that you live in a house that has a roof, let's say shingle or, or, or whatever kind of, besides concrete, you should have somebody to go up there and, and inspect that for you before it happened. So what you do, you call somebody, maybe your neighbors or some friends or somebody and say, mm -hmm. I need an assistant in, in doing this or doing that or doing the other, mm -hmm. right? And they should be able to help you. And it's always best to contact a professional certified contractor who has the experience and expertise in roof repairs and inspections. But you don't wait until that time come mm -hmm. to, do, to do so, because once that storm down, it's done. Ain't nothing you could do but sit down and ride it out. Exactly. Now for persons who are not elderly or may not have access to the professional contractors to assess their roof, what should they be looking for if they decide to take on this task for themselves? Well, a simple way for you to do so is to, um, if you are a younger person that can go on the roof yourself or... You go on the roof with a partner for safety precaution. Is to make sure you go up there and check all your, check the nails to see how the shingles are nailed on, if they're nailed properly, or if the, if the um, top paper is done. So some people doesn't have um, shingle on their house, some people still have top paper and stuff like that. Make sure all that stuff is nailed or putty properly, mm -hmm. right? Because once that paper start to lift, mm -hmm. that's when you get problem. And you can't go in the storm and try to fix it. So you make sure you, you, you have somebody to go up there and help you do so. Somebody with some knowledge or something. Yeah, so you know? really and truly try to get someone who's in the field Absolutely. of roof maintenance. Yes. So you mentioned windows and doors. How can we protect our windows? Okay. Normally what you do, if it doesn't have a shutter, mm -hmm. right? You try and get some plywood and make sure that it's secure properly. If you have a wooden structure, then it's easy to put it. If you can't put screws, you put a few nails on the back of it. If you have a wooden window, you make sure you put a bat across it to make sure it's, it's secure properly. And the other thing is that you, once you prepare, you always have emergency plan. Yeah. Right? 
and your emergency plan must include material and tools a hammer saw nails or screws yeah during the time of storm there wouldn't be no electric saw or electric yeah so you have to do things in manual you have to do mm -hmm. manually so you'll have to think about well you know i got a battery drill but yeah that battery drill may last for five minutes but nail and hammer and a handsaw is the key a thing little to have. Screwdrivers and a stuff little, yes yeah. but you need to have those stuff um, and you don't have them outside you have them inside, inside. right mm -hmm. just in case of a window blowing or a door blow you can actually put something to that and nail it up real quick yeah so that's what you want mr parker you made mention of securing your manual tools and equipment inside the home which is very important should we also store some emergency ply and wood inside the home in case of window or shutter failure? Well, what you do, you prepare it before, before the storm. You, you have it in the home, but you had to cut not really to size, but a yeah. overlay just in case. Because if you may cut it to size and then you won't be able to get no nails or screws into it. So if you cut it a little overlay, then you'll be able to nail or screw to it. Yeah. And the thing about that, if you have, let's say you got a concrete home, right? Yeah. You don't want to be driving nail on the inside, your wall on the inside. Yeah. So you try and you prepare that on the outside before that storm come. Yes. You know what I mean? So we're paying attention to our roof, our windows, and our doors. Mr. Parker, from your experience, having seen many homes and facilities post impact, as a contractor, what are some of the most vulnerable areas of a house? The most vulnerable areas in your house will be, could be any part, depends on your structure. Depends on how you build the integrity yes, of your home. Yes, depends on how you build your, your home. But the most safest part in your house will always be your bathroom. The washroom. Yeah. Why is that? Because it's kind of small mm -hmm. and, and there's not too much to fall on top of. Okay. Normally, a, a regular size washroom is like 8 by 5 or something like that. So it's, it's difficult for something heavy to keep falling, to fall down on you if you in there a lot of people have a belief that mm -hmm. the trees mm -hmm. protect the home no what is your belief on maintenance with your yard the and trees very first thing you want to do um, in time if you have there's a hurricane is cut those trees um cut those branches as close as possible because what they does they swing around those and mm -hmm. what they does once they keep swinging around the tree getting broken so once the tree start cracking and fall it's going to fall heavy mm -hmm. and once it fall heavy even if the tree is close to the house, what it's going to do is going to beat all your shingle off your house when the yeah. leaves start moving here, there, and everywhere. Not only that, at the end of the day, you're saving your trees as well. You, you're not, you know, you won't be losing much of them. Yes, because they're going to grow back. Yes, right. And that's from my experience. We're going a little bit into situation now, from a yeah. maintenance perspective. Uh -huh. Forty-eight hours, seventy-two hours out, a storm is approaching. What should you do? Seventy-two hours out, and a storm is approaching. Your house should be fully secure, almost. At it's supposed to already that, be secure. Yes, and your and your uh, your yard should be free of debris. Free of debris. Free of debris because debris is um, what really goes around in the hurricane and breaking windows and doors and all that stuff and could kill you if you get outside and definitely you know, because I I learned from experience in Hurricane Ike. Yes. Right. I was in Blue Hills. I never run the Blue Hills during a hurricane because I know I have a hurricane bunker mm -hmm. in my in my house. Good for you. Yeah, <laughs> and. I went out there because I couldn't hear anything. I couldn't hear no breeze. I couldn't hear no rain. It feel like it's too calm in my house. So I walked, I opened the door. And when I opened the door, right, I saw this puff of wind came in and sucked the manhole in the other part of the roof of the house straight up to the roof. Wow. And when I do that, I closed the door. Mm -hmm. So I went back outside. And as I went outside, um, a piece of shingle flew off my other house. And flew straight into the concrete and just then that concrete because anything that's anything debris was, yes. turns into missiles yes it's turning right into missiles so mm -hmm. yeah you must be make sure your yard is free of debris yeah and your house is um your property is fully uh, secure fully secure don't wait for that last minute don't wait be proactive you're not hearing it here we are encouraging you to be proactive with oh, your yeah. preparedness Do that. So let's move the scenario on. We did our best to protect our home. We are bunkered down. The hurricane is upon us. Uh -huh. Unfortunately, a tree from our neighbor's yard mm -hmm. fell. A big coconut tree fell mm -hmm. and it broke into the house. It's on the roof. It damaged part of your house. Mm -hmm. What should you do in that scenario? The, um, and it depends on the size of the, of the hole in the roof. Yeah. Right? If the hole is pretty small, then you want to open up so the air can get in and out open a window 
or a door or something so the way it wants the wind get in mm-hmm. get out but the problem is that if you if you and you also want to stay um you want to stay secure in one particular area okay. if you have family everybody should be together together right so in case of something happened you wouldn't have to try and move to go in to try find to look, anybody to yeah. find anybody you so sticking stay, together with sticking any together mm-hmm. is very very important and you're sticking up and one of the safest part that you believe is the safest part of your house and but if the hole is large, same rule applies? Same rule applies. You stay away from that area. Yeah. You make sure stay away from that area. And, and if the hole is large, then ain't nothing you can do. Mm-hmm. But stick it out. Right? Yeah. But you stay, you, stay, you stay away from that particular area and just ride the stomach. Now, the only way you get out of there, see, if you're in a flooded zone area and you tr- know there's a higher ground somewhere else yeah. nearby. But other than but that, that's a risk. It's a risk. It's a no risk. To, it's yeah. a risk to go ahead and try to move around during the in the eye of a storm and or the, in the middle of a storm, I should say. And you said something very important there: flooded area. You should know if you're in a flooded area way before a storm happens. Some people just stubborn, regardless to what it is. They believe that they're gonna stick it out. So you have to let them know that. And that's you know, so dangerous. You know, it is dangerous. Very dangerous. Try and get out as. as quick as possible or before anything happened right but especially if, if you're in a flood zone area if, try not to be in a flood zone area I should. that is general common yeah. sense try not to be in a flood zone area that area must be evacuated yeah. and you have to evacuate to your friends and your family home before you before go to the, stuff, yes. the public shelter that's the last yeah. resort especially in these times with covid19 that we're fighting a lot of people still have toppling on top of their roof they may be doing some repairs and it's hurricane season they mm-hmm. have top it's top good roof covering actually it's not really a good roof covering but if that's all you got then you have to stick with them right and 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 the only thing you can do with that is to batten it down right so there's a proper procedure on how yes. to use top what you do if you get a top and you know that's all you got well, you try and get to the hardware store as quick as possible before that stuff happened and you get some one by four or one and, and you batten that top down right you nail that down on top of your top like every two feet or something like that mm-hmm. top is basically for covering up stuff that is inside not outside yeah but you you people use top because they have they they got no other choice mm-hmm. right so if you have no other choice what you do you try and get some lumber so mm-hmm. one by four and you nail that top down properly from like every two feet you go ahead and you nail yeah. so okay. you nail strip of wood across 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 so Definitely, won't, it won't fly up because once it starts flying up, that's it. It's yeah, no it's exposed once again. Yes. All right. Home repair tools that you should have inside during a hurricane. Yes, you should have. Um, you should have a hammer. Mm-hmm. You should have nail. You should have handsaw. You should have something to cut with, like knives and stuff like that. And you should have rope. Make sure you have ropes. Make sure you have some ropes because you never know what you have to tie down. You may even have to tie yourself down. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Yeah. But you, 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 you make sure you have those tie. And nail, hammer, and saw is some of the most important thing besides Tools. the material. Yes. All right. So, thank you so much, JJ. Before we exit the show today, I just want to ask if you have any final words of encouragement to the public at this time. Yes. My, my final word for you is to be proactive as much as you can. Mm-hmm. Um, don't wait until the storm hitting before you try and secure yourself or try to secure your home and stuff like that. Always have a plan B in case of a plan A don't work. Um, but be proactive regardless of what it is. Proactive is what you need to do. Be proactive. Thank you so much, JJ, for joining us. Uh, Mr. Thank you so much, Mr. Parker, for joining That's us. Fine, <laughs> Nobody knows me as Mr. Parker. Everybody knows me as JJ. JJ. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, guys, you heard it right here. Do not procrastinate. The skies are clear and it's only for a moment. It's for you to do your house repairs and inspection and try to secure and get all the tools and supplies you need, not only to consume, but also to keep your family and your household safe. Join us next week Wednesday right here on Radio Turks and Caicos for Disaster 365. I'm your host, Joanna Wilson, signing off. Until then, stay safe and be prepared.